All right, so let's talk some more about this layer mask. So I'm going to show you how to use your layer mask to actually edit what you what is visible from one layer to the next layer um, by modifying this mask. So uh, I'm going to see if I can't use my layers panel uh, to make this bigger. Nope, that's actually the biggest I can make it. So, uh, but uh, so. You can, by the way, uh, if you don't like how tiny these little preview pictures are in your layers panel, you can make them larger and smaller. Uh, I am going to zoom in, though, uh, using my keyboard shortcut to zoom in. So you can see, remember along the edge of this tree, I said, you know, this isn't accurate. And you know what? If I had even got it as close as I could, it wouldn't be accurate. Because look, along the edge of this tree line, you see it? Along the edge of this tree line, there is there's some blurry pixels there right? That's what makes it look realistic and convincing is the edge of this tree line being blurry, right? The trees look further away. Trees are kind of fuzzy and blurry, but especially in an, a photograph, right? Uh, I don't want the building to be blurry because that's made out of concrete, but the trees, I kind of need to keep that selection area along the edge nice and blurry or else grandma's going to look at this and she's going to be like, what's going on with these trees over there? They look a little too perfect. Was well, some guy in a ladder up there, like trimming the tops of these to be perfect, like a bonsai tree. No, um, not realistic, right? Uh, we want to be convincing. We want to fool grandma. We want grandma to see this and go, wow, that's a lovely photo. Um, so here we go. I'm going to use my layer mask to make the modifications along the edge of this tree. Remember this, what we see up here is the sky from the sky layer. What we see down here below is the building from the background layer. Right? Just want to point out, by the way, I have not touched or modified this background layer one smidgen. I'm making all these improvements to layers above it. I am not modifying my background. So I'm going to go back to the sky. Now I don't want to modify the sky. I want to modify the mask of the sky by making sure I click on that and making sure that this is selected before I do any next steps. Now uh, I can, now that I have the mask selected, I can grab a brush. Um, using uh, a brush tool and I can use my options along the top here. Uh, I have, uh, this is softest brush, hard brush. So if you want a nice soft fluffy edge, if you want a edge uh, for your brush that's a little bit perfect, smooth, crisp, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to the softest brush possible uh, and I'm gonna hover near my tree here so you can kind of see the size of the brush that I'm working with here, right? Uh, it might be too big, but uh, I can always go to a smaller size the closer I get to the edge of these trees when I go to paint. Now, I'm going to make sure I'm painting with the correct color. If I paint with white along this edge, believe it or not, ooh, ooh, you see any white paint coming around here? No, because I am not painting the trees and I'm not painting the sky. What I'm painting is white, yes, white, using my foreground color. If this color was not white, by the way, I can just click on it. Yes, and use my color picker to select white. Uh, I can also hit this little button right here, right below. There's this tiny little button right here that actually will give me default colors, which is white as my foreground color, that's the color I paint with, and black as my background color, which is the color I delete to. Uh, that's a whole nother topic right there. But uh, So let's just keep white, because white's doing what I want. I'm gonna go along the edge, right? And I am going to modify what is white and what is black in this mask, because this mask is selected, which is changing the mask, right? It makes you feel like you're erasing pixels, but you're not. You're not, right? Watch this. <gasps> oh my gosh, don't panic, don't panic, because check it out. What can be white can also be black in the layer mask, right? Check it out, can you guys see that little blip? Probably not, it's teeny tiny, but there's a little blip of white in this layer mask because I just painted white right there where the tree is. It's super teeny tiny, I know you can't see it, but but I can always use this little swap, swap button, start painting with black, and change that area back to black in my layer mask to get those trees back if I made a mistake, right? So I'm gonna keep going along the edge here using my brush for my layer mask. Yes, it's a beautiful thing. Remember, I am not deleting pixels because at any time I mess up, Yes, at any time that I mess up, all I need to do is swap back to black and change that part that I've accidentally painted in white back to black in my mask. Yes, you guys get in the gist. So even though I couldn't necessarily perfect the edge along these trees here, 
Yeah, I can get a lot closer and perfect it using a brush and modifying what's being masked in my layer mask versus what is not. Now, I can also be real tricky about this. Now, I want it to stay looking natural. And you guys agree that, uh, that um, if when you start doing this, you'll be like, oh God, it's starting to look too perfect, right? Uh, it is very hard actually to keep it looking realistic. What I like to do, because this ends up looking a little too brushy, I like going a little bit smaller in my brush size. And instead of painting 100% black, I like to reduce the opacity of what I am painting with right? So I can go through and soften the edge and mess it up intentionally even more to be a lot more organic, not too perfect, not too brushy, uh, and make it so that uh, it doesn't look like uh, I was using a brush, right? Grandma can look at the edge and go, oh, look at that lovely brushy edge. Somebody's really got some. Right? So I'm going through uh, with not 100% black, but more like 30% black. So it's a, a gray instead of a black, yeah? Uh, and uh, I'm going along the edge and intentionally being a little messier, a little bit more organic with what's happening along that tree edge to keep it looking uh, realistic and to make sure that Grandma stays fooled uh, into thinking that what she's seeing uh, between the old sky and the new sky um, it was actually there on the day that this photo was taken. I'm going to switch back to my black here. I'm going to have to go over that area a little bit there. Um, and I can fix that later on using editing tools if I don't like. And now I can actually get a little bit closer to this. I gotta be real careful getting too close to this building because I don't want this building to get brushy, overly soft, right? Uh, but it could be that there's a couple of pixels here and there, just like a couple of little pixels here and there that, that still have like this whitish kind of edge. So uh, I'm gonna be ever so careful to make sure that that's a little bit softer of a transition. Uh, keep in mind, I'm still using opacity at 30 um, so that it's not obvious those changes. So now I'm going to zoom out for you so you can see. Oh, wow. Yes. Way more realistic along that tree line. Yeah. Uh, there are other ways, by the way, uh, to select along the edge of that tree line and to keep only that area blurry. More specifically, uh, a really cool tool in your tool panel called Quick Mask, which is this right here. Uh, it actually gives you an opportunity to select certain areas using a brush, which also means the edge of that selection area you used a brush for is a lot softer and um, uh, blurrier, right, um, than using, say, uh, the uh, lasso, which gives you a, a harder, crisper edge. So, um, so yes, layer mask introduce you to replacing that sky at the same time, layer mask, uh, but at the same time also um, show you how to edit that layer mask in order to perfect things along the edge. Uh, that need to be perfected. Uh, keep in mind this only applies to masking things from layer to layer. I'm able to adjust the edge of these trees to be softer like that by adjusting my layer mask because that is actually the edge of my mask for my sky, right? Um, so I'm actually uh, adding more sky or uh, or adding more trees by painting along the edge of my layer mask. Uh, if I were to do something, say, in the middle of this building, right, I would actually start seeing the sky through the center of this building. Uh, not very realistic, but um, uh, just pointing out that uh, really editing the layer mask in this scenario is, is what's making it possible for me to perfect uh, along the edge of these two layers of the sky and the building, right, where the edge of my mask is over here in my layer mask.